Hi guys, it's Ray with Ray's Turquoise Turtle. We are going to start a burst tumbler today. Um, I'm going to do this flamingo and monstera leaf image. I have it cut on my shape tape. Shape tape is something that Artistry Epoxy sent me to try. This is their product that they've developed. Um, they sent it to me in sheets, which is perfect because this will fit on a 20 ounce or a 30 ounce and you'll have extra on the end to do some test cuts. Uh, but I will put the links down below. Um, I did a bunch of test cuts and I actually found that for my machine, my current mats, my current blade, all of that, that just cutting it on the regular standard vinyl setting worked just fine. So. Um, but their recommendation is washi tape for your Cricut. So, um, I always, always do a test cut and I didn't keep it handy. I should have. Um, when I say I do a test cut, oh, I do have one right here that kind of got botched, but, um, I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can, but I have like maybe a third of an inch square with a quarter inch heart or yeah a star lined up inside that and if I can weed around that without it um, lifting or cutting through that's when I know I'm good so you can see on the back side where the star is still attached to the backing but it is cut cleanly around that's how I do my test cuts so that's that I do have this that I'm going to kind of lay out my color on. I like to, um, I like to draw it out on paper first, um, so that I can make sure it's going to fit nicely. And if it doesn't fit, then I would go back to the drawing board. In this case, I drew a straight line on the edge of the paper after I let one side go. I used a dry erase marker. It's not going to come completely off this cup, most likely, but, and this is not a great spray paint job. Um, winter in New York, sorry. I also ripped my paper when I pulled it off, but I wanted to make sure I had a straight line to start from. So, since I am doing this on camera, and I would like to struggle as little as possible. So, that said... I'm going to put my cup down, and this is my top, this is my top of my image. I'm going to grab the backer, and make sure your sticky part sticks to the front pieces. Make sure you don't peel it with your backer. And I'm actually going to just tear a piece of the backing off. And I can move it down a little bit. But that'll give me a little bit better control trying to line this up on the cup. So I'm going to line up just slightly off this line I drew. And I'm going to come all the way to the top. This is going to fold under a little bit because I did cut it a little bit long. But hopefully, hopefully, it's not going to travel too awful much. And hopefully it'll line up someone straight at the end. I'm going to grab an alcohol wipe. I buy alcohol wipes from Allegro Medical. Um, if I sell decals, I send one with it. So... I like to have them on hand and they're handy for something like this. So I'm going to try and not get my paper too much. But I do want to wipe off some of this if I can, at least lighten it up. Again, it's not going to be perfect and this line may end up showing through. I would normally do this with a pencil very lightly or even a piece of masking tape, which I probably should have done in hindsight. But I wanted you to be able to see 
the marking. So, I'm going to come back in and get my backing again. Stop monkeying with that. I'm going to make it worse. So I'm going to come back to this. I have a big pack of markers. Um, one of my friends and viewers sent these to me. They're awesome. Like, what a selection, right? So I want to figure out my color palette here. I pulled out a bright, bright pink, a light pink, Kind of middly pinky purple. I have this green that shifts to a blue, and I'm going to use that for the very outside line of the Monstera. So that's going to be this all the way around. And this is going to be six, seven, eight glitters. So it's going to be a lot, a lot. It's going to take me a bit. I'm going to try to work darkest to light, which means I'm going to work probably the black first, then the blue, then the darkest green, then the inside of the flamingos and like work my way through that way. So it's gonna kind of be scattered and a little bit all over the place. Okay, so I have everything in front of me. I have these for the ones that are bagged. Um, I have my order laid out. I have a bunch of papers ready to go. So I'm gonna put this where I can see it. And um, I'm gonna fast forward through a lot of this because even though it's gonna go quick, it's gonna be time consuming. So I'm gonna and these back up over here in the order they're going on and so in order to do this I will be sitting here and peeling off pieces And I'm going to do all of one color at once. I'm going to try not to touch the cup. And I do believe that might be all of the flamingo legs already. So... So well, this is the part where I would grab the trip brush and dust it off. And this is the part where I'm going to end up with bits of color under there if I don't start brushing to the top instead. So that's how we're going to start.
So if you find a place you forgot to do, like I didn't do my dark green here, and you saw me do this little beak just now, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, make sure you correct that as soon as possible before you start getting to your lighter colors. Because you can see where I did end up with some black inside that pink. And that's because it's lighter. So stop and fix your mistakes as soon as you can, but not like in the middle of, oh, I've got all this uncovered. Because that would just be a disaster. Okay, in my layout, I did the lightest pink as the most outer color. I think I'm going to flip-flop that and do the middle one as the lighter color. I also realized that the inside of the legs are attached. Um, when I went to pull this, I went to pull that and realized that. So this one's a little janky because of that. This happens to be the one I realized that on. So I am going to switch that up. So this is going to be the outside. So, before I go in with my last color, I'm going to double check for any other spots I missed, like this little blue spot. Because my last color is going to be the palest color, I really want to do this prior to that. And there's a little piece that should be, whoops. Oh, good. Scratch on my cup. <clears throat> Yikes. There's a little piece here that should be blue. But it's kind of tucked under at this point, so I'm gonna get under there and get that. I don't know if I can fix that scratch or not, but I can try. And then I have this one piece with my dark green that I'm still missing. Okay, so not perfect, but oh my god, this tape was so much better. I didn't have pieces lifting off all over the place. 
Um, the only pieces that did lift off were like the bottom ones that that's because I had them folded. So, um, and I'm going to clean up the bottom. Okay, so I cleaned up the bottom like I told you I was going to. Um, so now I have a nice rim to put my other glitter. I have glitter all over the bottom too. I took this outside and spray sealed it with Rust-Oleum Clear like three, four times. But I used my edge trimmer to clean up my bottom. You can see by the glitter on it. I figured out what setting I wanted it at and that's what I did there. And it actually peeled off relatively easily after the spray sealing, so that was good. Um, so I have my Tropics of Blue back out. And I have my Mod Podge out. And I need to put my football back in here, which was sitting here. And there it is. I had I brought it out to seal on my fancy um, Dollar Tree paper towel holder with a piece of pool noodle tape to the top just so I could leave it sitting there without having to bring my big holder out so that's why it was off the football in the first place so I'm just going to oof, carefully run the edge Okay, so I'm going to uh, probably hit that little spot once more, um, but I'm going to let this Mod Podge dry thoroughly because it's thick at this point. It's going to take a couple hours. I will get it back out, get it spray sealed, and then we will come in for the epoxy. And I decided I'm not going to do the top rim. It's so small anyways. And I really want the resin to come over the top. I may actually real quick just run my flap wheel around the edge and bring the top rim back to stainless. So I'll be back for epoxy. Okay, this is totally sealed now. I cleaned up the rim. Um, so I am ready to get my resin on. I am going to test the Artistry Epoxy Fast Set Thick Viscosity. And let me tell you, this is thick. Uh, I have not worked with a thick, thick resin in quite some time, so that was a little different for me. But I mixed up 30 mLs because I'm going over so much glitter. So let's get it on here. It's just before 5 now. So I'm going to check this about 7. So, like I said, I'm going to leave this for about two hours, and then I'm going to come back and check on it and see if we can touch it yet. And, um, yeah, I'll be back. Okay, so it's just after seven. It's been about two hours, and this is completely dry, so no trouble mixing, no issues. It obviously does need another coat, but for now... I can take it off and look at it a little closer. Um, definitely bungled my edge a little bit, but you know what? I am overall thrilled with this cup. I think it looks great. Um, so yeah, I am ready to get started on another one. 
very, very happy with the tape. Uh, the epoxy looks phenomenal. So, yeah, fantastic products. I would endorse both of these. The shape tape. I mean, if we ignore, you know, the messy parts, like, it is amazing. So, that is that. I'm going to get another coat on it so it can be smooth, smooth. It's mostly smooth. There's just a couple little chunky spots, but not bad at all. So, well, let me know what you think, and thank you for watching.